So what is AJAX? AJAX stands for Asynchronous JavaScript and XML. But getting away from official definitions and anything, basically it's the ability for JavaScript code that you write to make requests for new files to be sent to the browser. But the key is, when they arrive at the browser, they don't replace the current page that you're looking at. They're actually used by JavaScript, so you can decide what you want to keep, what you want to throw away out of the new file that's being passed to JavaScript. You can extract things from that file and then pick and choose what you want to replace on the web page instead of just replacing the entire page. So if I'm in my browser and I type in a location in the location bar and I hit enter, I'm going to be replacing the entire web page. With Ajax, I can make requests and have something sent to the browser, but then JavaScript handles that thing that was sent to the browser and decides what to do on the web page. So why is this important? Well, one of the first big sites that was using Ajax, way back in uh, 2001, I believe it was, was Google Maps. Now, we're all familiar with Google Maps. You, know, you can take a map, you can click and drag around on the map, I can zoom in and out. Wonderful functionality. But how many people now use MapQuest? MapQuest was the big mapping engine back in the day. Here's a screenshot from MapQuest back in 2005. Now it was around, I think starting in 1996, but even 2005, this is what you got on your web page. Now it was a smaller map because people had lower uh, bandwidth speeds, but you still got this static picture. And if you wanted to move on the map, I couldn't click and drag. I couldn't just use my mouse to zoom in and out. I'd have to use these buttons on the side. Click, zooming in, zoom out. If I wanted to move on the map, I'd click north, west, south, or east, or in the corners to move diagonally. Now, that doesn't sound like a big deal, but imagine every time you wanted to move a little bit north on the map, you would click north, and then the entire web page would have to reload. Not just the map, not just this image, but the entire page. So the headers, the footer, the advertisements, all of the content around the map would have to be re-downloaded and used again. Google Maps said, well, that's kind of crazy. Why don't we just design a system that's going to use a bunch of tiles? So there's a whole bunch of image tiles on this web page. And as I zoom in or zoom out, there we go. If I go fast enough, I can move out. You see there's blank spaces around the images. So if I go to someplace new, zoom out there, you can see the gray around it. If you zoom out fast enough, the website hasn't had time to load the brand new image tiles that would move around that. And so we can zoom in, zoom out, slide around the map, very functional, and very quickly this became the most popular mapping system because of that ease of use. So this is Ajax. It's the ability to go and fetch those other files and bring them back without having to reload the entire web page. Now, I've got a web page here. There's a code gist. I'll put the link to it in the comments as well, but there's three code samples. Old version of Ajax. This is the code that was being used Say if you were building a website two, three, four years ago, um, I'm, I'm talking like 2013, 2014, 2012, around there, you'd want to do this. You'd be making an XML HTTP request object and using that to go and fetch the data. So I'd open the request. This is kind of getting it ready. This is the method I want to use. I want to fetch this URI, so this address right here, and I want to do it asynchronously. I'll come back to that in a moment. And when this response gets back, this is how I'm going to handle it. I'm just going to console log out the data. Now, none of these code samples I'm using are doing any real error handling or doing much with the data that's coming back. It's just a matter of send out the request, get the response. So open gets ready. I'm adding the event listener for load to say what I want to do when I've loaded the response, when the file comes back to me. There's an error listener in case something goes wrong, and then send actually sends the request. So that's 
the fairly recent old version. The new one uses fetch, and there's another video in this series where I talk about fetch and how that gets used. Actually, there's going to be several videos. And then the really old version, if we're talking back 2005, 2001, Internet Explorer version 5.5 was the first one to come out with this. Uh, Microsoft created an ActiveX object that would make these XML HTTP requests. And it wasn't until Firefox, I think in 2006, where the other browsers started to make these requests, but they were using this XML HTTP request object, which became standard. All the browsers now support that one. Fetch, since about 2014, this has become possible in more and more browsers. It's a much simpler streamlined method with a lot more options, we'll say. The old version, we would check to see if the browser supported XML HTTP request. If it did, create one of those objects. If it didn't, look to see if the browser supported ActiveX object, which meant it was one of the versions of Internet Explorer. And then there was two different ActiveX objects that you would have to create. One of these two would be the one supported by the particular version of IE that you were using. Once you figured out which of these three objects you were going to use, then the code that we used here was effectively the same as up here. It was just we no longer had to support the old ActiveX objects. So asynchronous, coming back to that. Doing something asynchronously in the browser, like making a request, means the user gets to keep doing whatever they're doing on the web page at the same time as the request is being made. If we said false, we don't want to make an asynchronous request. We're making a blocking request, so the browser is going to send off the request for the new file on behalf of our JavaScript code. The user will not be able to interact with the web page until the response comes back from the server with that file. So the user's stuck there. They can't click on anything, they can't scroll, they can't fill out a form, nothing. It's just blocked. They're not allowed to touch the interface until something comes back. Not very practical. So in 99% of the cases, we want to say, yes, true, I want to use an asynchronous call. And this is the default. If you leave off this last option, it will be an asynchronous call. And that's the basics of AJAX. We've got XML HTTP requests supported in all the browsers now that are currently out there. And Fetch being the latest version, this is the one that nearly all the browsers, you've got a very large portion of the market now that support Fetch. So if you are just starting out with web development now in 2017, then Fetch is the way to go.